So this is it. This is it, yes. Gabriela Gonzalez is a physicist at Louisiana State University. Her head has always been in the stars, but these days she's on, as they say, cloud nine. When you detect it's this, it does that all of a sudden re-energize people to go, okay, we're gonna go find more stuff. Of course, of course, yes. We, we want to make this better. We want to detect more. We didn't expect this detection. The detection Gonzalez is so euphoric over is being hailed as one of the most monumental scientific breakthroughs in the last 100 years. Ladies and gentlemen, we have detected gravitational waves. We did it. You may be asking, what the heck are gravitational waves? Well, it is difficult at best to wrap your head around, unless, of course, you are a physicist. They are, scientists say, ripples in the fabric of space-time. Albert Einstein first predicted their existence in his 1915 general theory of relativity. Now, you can't see these waves or even feel them, but if you could, they might look something like the ripples on the water that spread outward after you throw in a rock. In fact, just like throwing a rock in a pond, these ripples are caused by violent events in the universe. So, how does Gabriela Gonzalez fit into all this? She is the spokesperson and member of the team of 900 scientists around the world involved in the project, a team that is pretty much guaranteed a Nobel Prize. Until a few months ago, we would say that we searched for gravitational waves, but now we have found gravitational waves. In order to detect these waves, there are twin facilities, one in Washington State and the other here in Livingston, Louisiana, where Gonzalez works, it's called LIGO, or the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. That's a mouthful. Each observatory is an engineering marvel. Four kilometer long L-shaped tube-like structures surround near perfect vacuum tubes. Inside, laser light travels back and forth between mirrors down each arm. When a gravitational wave passes by, the laser will measure a change in the distance between mirrors, a change so infinitesimally small, it is mind-bending. It is changed the distance between the mirrors, our mirrors that are four kilometers mm -hmm. distant, by a part in a thousand of a proton diameter, 10 to the minus 18 meters. It sounds incredible. But that's how the instrument is so complex to make it so sensitive. Gonzalez grew up in Argentina, her dad an accountant, her mom a high school math teacher. Early on, she loved math. Her passion for physics came in high school and continued at the National University in Córdoba. I thought that you could explain everything, that if you wanted to explain things, you had to learn physics. That, that was it. <laughs> so that's when I got so into physics. So was your family happy when you made this physics choice in life? I mean, were your parents okay with it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were, they were always very, very supportive. I think they were a bit surprised and they thought, well, I don't know what she can do with physics, but she likes it. Gabriella and her husband, also a physicist, came to the United States in 1989 to continue their studies and do research. It wasn't easy. Oh, it was, it was a shock in many different ways. I mean, that first year, uh, we got married, <laughs> we moved, <laughs> uh, we, we moved to a different country. I, in, in 88, I started having uh, diabetes type 1, which is a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in 1990, my husband got cancer that he successfully uh, went through, but it was a process. <laughs> so <laughs> within one year, it was so many shocks. And when you guys first came from Argentina, the snow was on the ground, right? It we arrived to Syracuse in February of 89, in the middle of a snowstorm. I had never seen snow falling from the sky. Eventually, both Gabriella and her husband found their way to Louisiana State University. Here, she spends time with graduate students in the physics department. Today was a group meeting. I've taken an amplitude, which is a function of time, 
and that amplitude itself is just a step function. Gonzalez was just about stunned by the worldwide acclaim their detection has garnered. Will it be inspirational, attracting more students to study physics? I am hopeful, yes. I don't think myself as a woman in science. I just think of myself as a scientist. <laughs> and I, I do hope that I inspire everybody about, if not doing science, at least being excited about science. But opportunities for women weren't always there in the sciences. They were not. That's right. I mean, I never felt shortchanged myself. Um, you know, sometimes people said things like, I heard people saying, oh, women can know the science, things like that, but I never took that seriously. Jeff Clayton is a professor of physics and astronomy at LSU. You need to see role models, and uh, physics is one of the last areas, really, to diversify. Um, and uh, when I came here 20 years ago, we had no female faculty members in our department. And uh, uh, getting Gabby and uh, a few of our other professors has been really important for that. And so just having her here in our department is great, but also because she's the spokesperson person for LIGO, um, she's really got a high profile now, and just for women in physics in general. The day we visited the LIGO site with Gonzalez, a group of school children were on a tour led by one of the resident scientists. As a scientist, I'm paid to do things no one has ever done before and to think about things no one has ever thought of before. They pay me money to do that. I do it for free, but don't tell them that, okay? These days, there are lots of tours, lots of excitement, lots of kids. Now, back to those gravitational waves the LIGO team detected. Scientists say the waves came from two black holes spinning around each other faster and faster. Black holes are places in space where gravity is so strong, not even light can escape. The two black holes eventually merged in one cataclysmic event, spewing out incredible energy in the form of gravitational waves. The energy that was in these gravitational waves was huge. If it had been visible electromagnetic waves, it would have been brighter than all of the stars in the universe put together. The invisible wave, Gonzalez says, had been traveling across the universe for more than a billion years before it reached Earth. By then, it was just a faint blip, a chirp, as it passed through. What are we learning? Are we learning more about the universe, the origin, the history of the universe? Is that what you're doing? That's what we're doing, right? I mean, humanity has been looking at the sky to learn where we come from, where stars come from, what the universe is like. That's what we are doing. This is another way of doing astronomy. Astronomers and physicists can now better study and understand not only the universe we see, but the region we can't.